Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas. A very Merry Christmas. Happy, Happy, New, Happy New Year. Year. Good morning, Hope Church. My name is Chantel Cotton and I'm from our Bromley Common Congregation and I lead our youth work at Hope Church. We hope you've had a very, very Merry Christmas and you are so welcome to this morning's service. We've got so much in store for you, an interview with Trevor and Rachel Payne, um, some reflection videos on 2020 and looking forward to 2021 and some worship and a short encouragement from Rachel Payne too. Hope you enjoy the service. Good morning, everybody. Um, just to update you that we were supposed to have a youth band um, lead worship for us today, but unfortunately due to coronavirus and restrictions, we weren't able to record something. So it's super sad, but hopefully in the new year, we'll be able to get them in to record a worship time for us. Um, so what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna have a worship time that was recorded back in November um, by Molly. Um, so um, just before we get into that, I just want to say the first line of that first song is I've come here today to worship again because I know that my father is here and I know that Christmas uh, plans have changed, Christmas, my Christmas plans have changed um, but let's take heart and actually that, that first line is so true that he's right here right now and we're about to come and worship him together so despite what's happened, same God uh, and let's worship him together, amen.
thousand stories of why they think you're like that I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I Thank mm-hmm. you.
Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. And the Father's arms are open. We have asked some of our leaders for their reflections on 2020 and their hopes for 2021. Here we go. Um, my most unusual gift was the year I hoped and asked for a sat nav from my husband. And when I saw him come back from the shops with a Halfords bag, I was very hopeful. But on Christmas morning, when I opened my present, I discovered that he had bought me car shampoo so I could wash my car, which wasn't quite what I was hoping for. So that was funny. Certainly the most unexpected gift was uh, when I was 17, I'd been caught for speeding. Uh, so I had a 30 pound fine. However, three days later, someone came up to me and said, I want to give you this gift of 30 pound, which was incredible because no, I obviously didn't tell anybody. So yes, very unexpected. Well, for me, it was receiving a Harrods hamper, most unexpectedly. The 
the last nine months actually has been a very difficult time you know, for everybody around the world because of the pandemic. It, but one lesson that you know this period has really taught us is about you know trusting in God. You know we came into this year with so many expectations. You know we had a lot of plans and everything. But suddenly the pandemic came and the, the virus was everywhere. We had lockdown and everything. But one thing I realized is that the Bible said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. We are all making plans of our own, but God had a better plan. But here we are, we thank God, we are still trusting in God that we go through it strong and we can go through it victorious. I've learned to appreciate simplicity and to slow down and really be present in the moment and especially to appreciate the little things. Uh, well, what I've learned over the last nine months is that you don't have to go on holiday to be refreshed by nature. I found incredible walks all over Kent and I just feel really privileged to live in Bromley. For me personally, a lot more patient. Patience, it's keeping my patience and with everyone living at home and your family more around you when you're used to just sort of everyone being out and about doing their own thing. Um, so I think it's made me look at actually my attitudes and at how I've dealt with them and to sort of stop and think a bit more about that, take stock and really just digging into God deeper and just pressing into him, praying, praying, praying and giving everything back to God, absolutely everything, your family, everything that comes at you, you just got to give it back to God. So yeah. I've learnt to expect the unexpected and to be joyful in the waiting and that I really can't do without my hairdresser, Tracy. The thing I've enjoyed most about 2020 has been the fellowship and the fun that we've received with our friends over Zoom in the Chislehurst congregation again. It has been uh, really enjoyable and has made these trying times um, bearable. Uh, spiritual development this year, I guess what I've really learned about this year is being thankful and just thanking God at the beginning of every day and spending time with him, worshipping and in the word just makes such a difference to how the day then goes. So good lesson to learn. <laughs> and personal development, I guess, just how much I need to be outside every day, having a walk, enjoying nature, even in the rain and the wind, I need to get outside. And I also learned about myself this year that I am definitely somebody who likes to socialize and see people and hug people, and I don't do well with my own company. So you never stop learning more about yourself. My hope is that we will take all that we have learned and maintain it and further develop it in the coming year. So not just revert back to the old, but maintain the creativity, uh, the community and kindness, and also that we would really cherish getting to do all the things we haven't been able to do when we get to finally do them again. Yes, what I'm looking forward to is getting on a plane and going to uh, Greece and the Mediterranean. Um, so we'll hopefully do that in 2021, but uh, also as uh, to start embark on climbing the Munros in the United Kingdom, which are hills over 3,000 uh, feet high, of which there are 282. And um, as I'm not getting any younger, I need to get on with this project as soon as possible. Yeah, we really go for joy. We go for peace, yeah, we go for, for a peaceful year 2021, that things will be normal, a new normal, we say. So as we look forward to the new year, I think our hopes are this, we wish you and your family a safe entry to 2021, um, praying for you, believe that uh, God loves you and has got his hand on your life. I think secondly, we want you to enter 2021 with a generous heart. I just want to believe that it's not going to be an easy year for some folk. And it's so important that we have a generous heart. And lastly, 
I enter 2021 with expectation. Expectation that this is a new start, it's a new year, and it's an opportunity for a new history to be written for us as, a, as couples, as families, as a church, and as a community. To get married and honeymoon in Israel. So we are joined by Trevor and Rachel. Uh, if you guys want to introduce yourselves and just tell us a fun fact about you both. Okay, I won't let you guess anymore. I'm Trevor and this is Rachel. <laughs> and uh, we are, have been married for what, 47 years? Yeah. And that's been a great 47 years. And we have recently moved here to Ludlow. We'll tell you a little bit more about that later. And uh, we've been in the ministry for 30 years. Hmm. Prior to that, we ran a video library. Yes, Christian, and, Christian Video Library. And before that, we had our own record shop for, for 12 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's a little bit about us. Yeah, yeah. and your fun fact? Fun fact? Well, yes, I was asked, Chantel asked me for a fun fact just three minutes ago. <laughs> but here's a story about how I met Rachel. I went to work one day at Pan American Airlines, where, we both, where I was employed, and... At the door, my friend said, there's a new girl here. You know, she's quite pretty. So I went in and had a good look at Rachel and uh, really it was love at first sight. And all the guys in the, in the office knew uh, that I was very keen on Rachel. And they said, hey, you know that new girl? I said, yeah. I said, she's really keen on tennis. And you know, we've got a tennis club here at Pan Am. So I thought, well, this is the way to impress her. So I went down Lily White's, the Piccadilly Circus. I bought all the tennis gear, the shorts, the top, the cap, the shoes, a racket. I'd never played tennis in my life, by the way. And at the end of the day, I put all this gear on and I walked past Rachel's uh, desk casually and I said, hey, Rachel, do you like tennis? Thinking that if she said yes, I could take her to the club. And she looked up at me and she said, no. <laughs> so, no. So that was a bit of a disappointment to me. I've still got the gear, but I still never played tennis. Yeah, it's very sad, really. <laughs> He, he came up to my desk and it was like bright shining white like an advert for a detergent and I thought oh this is all new stuff yeah. <laughs> there we go a new career an advert so it took me another three weeks to work out how to ask her out but I lent her a book by John Steinbeck she liked that and then I asked her out to the cinema so that's how it was oh. and the rest mm. is history there we go. Is, yes mm. and a wonderful history it's been too <laughs> especially for <Rachel. laughs> Yes, it's been quite an adventure, it really has, the whole, the whole thing has been uh, amazing. Yeah, because in those days we didn't know God, we didn't know, you know that God had a very special plan for our lives, but uh, yeah. it's been quite a co roller coaster ride, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's great. Wonderful. Yeah, so uh, there's a kind of a fun fact. That is, that is very fun, very fun, <laughs> yeah. Very fun. yeah. Um, so yeah, you guys led Hope Church for 20 years uh, until did. you handed to, over to Tina and Tony um, last year. And you're yeah. very excitingly, as you've mentioned, you've moved to Ludlow. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? And yeah, you've recently moved. Yeah. Well, before I say that, just let me say that in the year that we handed over to Tony and Tina, I have been so impressed by the way Tony has led the church. I just couldn't be more proud and I couldn't be more pleased with the way things have continued to happen. So just to put that into perspective, it was about eight years ago that we discovered Ludlow, wasn't it? We watched a TV program about Ludlow and... Uh, Wow, what an attractive place. So we booked a holiday to come and have a look at it. I liked it very much. I said to Rachel, one day I'm going to retire here. And uh, she said, well, it might be nice in the summer. Let's mm. try it in the winter. Mm. So we came back in February and it was a heat wave. So I yeah. said to Rachel, this is obviously the place for us. So and we've been, we've, we've been coming back over the years. And then having handed the church over to Tony, and now my main responsibility is being with Regions Beyond, uh, leading the UK team, being part of the global team, it occurred to me that once I'd handed over to Tony, we could be based anywhere in the UK uh, to do that work for the Lord. And so what came to mind was, let's go to Ludlow. So here we are. We, uh, we were here in August looking mm -hmm. for a house. Mm -hmm. We found this place that we're living in now. We moved in last Wednesday. We've been here a week. And so far, so good. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, brilliant. Yeah, the, the move went pretty smoothly apart from Trevor's car breaking down yeah my new car I got everything packed in the car the moving men said we're ready to go I went to open my car and the being an electric car 
everything had died. So it was a bit of a bit of a scary moment. Yeah, so but, I had to come up here and get the keys and get to the house first. And it's about four hours drive to get here from Orpington. And then the AA man put me right, so I got here eventually. Oh, wow. Oh, that was a bit cracking. We didn't yeah. know what was going to happen mm. there. No, but yeah. it's a lovely We mm. feel very comfortable here. And we're looking forward to seeing many of our friends from Hope Church come and visit us. Yeah. Because this is a beautiful place and we have a spare bedroom and... Uh, no bed yet, but... No bed. It's, it's no. On <laughs> lovely <laughs> floors. <Or four>. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. It sounds great, doesn't it? Mm, yeah. yeah. So Christmas is coming up and obviously it looks a bit different now because of COVID and everything like that and restrictions. Uh, so what are your plans for Christmas? Well, they've changed today yeah. because of the new lockdown and all the regulations and the bubble thing. Uh, we were planning to go down on Christmas Eve, stay with one daughter, Sarah, mm. be with her Christmas morning, then go across to our daughter, Jessica in Tunbridge Wells, stay with her. And then on Boxing Day, go and see our daughter, Becky in Cambridge. But they, our daughters have contacted us now and out their great concern for our age because we're in our 70s. They said they'd like us to stay alive and not to come. So this is going to be the first truly romantic Christian Christmas. Uh, Christmas. <laughs> hey. Got to be a Christian That's brain. So listen to your message all day. Yeah. So we're just going to be the two of us at Christmas in our be. new house yeah. with our log fire burning and a little bit of mistletoe with the couch. I yeah, think, we'll right? go out and yeah. cut some holly and have it over the fireplace, I think. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. might go out for a meal on Christmas Day. We've never done that before. Oh, mm. uh, yeah. yeah. Or something. Yeah. Maybe yeah. yeah. cooking all the cleaning. If they're open, yeah. <laughs> but it's tier two, two here. It's a little bit more relaxed here. We can eat. Oh, more. yeah. Um, so you guys um, obviously have moved and you've moved to a new place. Um, lo loads of new people. Um, so what are your sort of thoughts on church? Are you, have you found a church? Are you looking for a church? Is that something for the new year? What are, what are your guys? Well, we were thinking to, to join a church locally and then try and gently introduce them into regions beyond, as one does. <clears throat> but something very interesting occurred that's prompted us in a different direction. That uh, It was about five weeks ago that Fuzi McQuenna asked me to record a message to be broadcast on their Friday meetings, because they, they meet on Fridays in Dubai, in Dubai. So I recorded a message. And then, like we're having here, he interviewed us live mm. during their meeting to introduce us to the church before my preach was broadcast. And there was a, an ex-member of the Dubai church watching online in Italy. And he had come from the Shropshire area and had a close friend here in Ludlow who'd been expressing to him over recent months how disappointed he was at the church scene in Ludlow and how he'd been praying that God would do something. And... Uh, he rang him up and said, I think I've just found the answer to your prayer. A couple called Trevor and Rachel are actually moving to Ludlow. And they seem a great couple. And the guy got in touch with us immediately. And we met up with them for coffee about mm -hmm. a month ago. And he said, I really was praying about this. And I felt God say to me, I'll be sending someone to you who will be the answer to your prayers. So mm -hmm. I do believe it's you and Rachel. Yeah, and then they've that. introduced us to another couple who are also feeling a little bit disillusioned. And so out of those conversations, we have decided uh, to plant a church. Yay! Okay. All the experience we've got, all the mistakes we've made for 30 years and all the mistakes we've made at Hope Church and all the experience we've got, now we're going to start now. And this time we're going to do it right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we felt God saying to us, not just for Ludlow, how about churches right across the Shropshire area, all the villages and towns? So we're, gonna, we're planning and seeking God that we might start lots of very small churches around North Herefordshire and South Shropshire. So that's the plan. And in January, if COVID allows and we're allowed to go back on the streets, we're going to start talking to people about Jesus, meet with these four other, these two other couples. So there'd be six of us to start with. And uh, yes, See it's going to be called, does. it's going to be called Mobilise. Wow. So write a charity called Mobilise UK. You know, why, why go modest? And uh, then we can have mobilised uh, Ludlow, mobilised Bitterly, which is the village we're in, mobilised Shropshire. That's the plan. That's where God seems to be leading mm. us. So come back in a year's time. We'll let you know how we're getting on. Yeah, that's in so the, exciting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll be coming back to visit because we still want to be involved in the London region. Yeah. We've got involved in the Western region yeah, now. Yeah, and our family down in the yeah. Bromley, Orpington kind of yeah. area, about half an hour's drive away. So we'll be down there quite 
hopefully quite regularly once the COVID sorted out. Yeah, but we're excited about the future. Yeah, it yeah. sounds super exciting. <laughs> Have you ever heard the phrase, life begins at 71? <laughs> there we go. There we go. Um, <laughs> that is incredible. Well, guys, I am so excited for the future as well. I think God has definitely been on the move. Um, he's definitely on the move with you guys. Um, so thank you so much for sharing that with us and taking the time out to, to be part of this interview. Um, I just want to pray for you, if that's okay, to pray for um, Mobilize. Um, yeah. Yeah, Father, I thank you for Trevor and Rachel. God, I thank you for their ministry. I thank you for their time at Hope. And God, I thank you that you're um, clearly at work in their lives, Lord, that you've been, um, you've gone before them, even in this move to Ludlow, Lord, you've gone before conversations. And God, we just pray for this new initiative of Mobilise UK. God, I just pray for your hand to be upon that. Father, I pray that you will just breathe life into that um, ministry. Father, we pray for um, strength and energy um, for Trevor and Rachel. God, I pray for... Um, yeah just new ideas um a new strength in you father we thank you for this move god i pray um that would you place people around them to uplift them and grow them and strengthen them yeah for your glory jesus amen, amen. amen. thank you so much thank you it's That's been a real so privilege to be on the uh, well just after christmas isn't it but uh, i hope you're all gonna have a happy new year as yeah. well yeah yes you too thank you so much god bless Herald angel sing glory to the newborn king. Dishonor and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic host proclaim, Christ is born. Reconciliation is about restoring relationships. God's plan was to save the world through this baby, to deal with the separation that existed between himself, a holy God who could not look on sin, and all those people who did not want to know him. We all love action heroes, don't we? It's one of the most popular film genres, and the story is always the same. The good guys, maybe Superman or Superwoman, Spider-Man, maybe Spider-Woman, come to deal with the baddies. Well, Jesus is the ultimate action hero. He came and dealt a knockout blow to Satan, our enemy, the very bad guy. 
Jesus solved the problem of what was separating us from God, our sin. He came into the world to make a way for us to be reconciled, to be restored to a right relationship with God himself. Jesus came intentionally to lay down his life for us, to die in our place for the things we do wrong. Those times when we go our own way and say, I can do this without you, I don't need you in my life. Jesus came to give us eternal life by offering up his life for ours. Isn't that an amazing deal? We all know how important relationships are, how our lives are enriched by our family and our friends, and how painful it is when those relationships are damaged. In my own family, I've seen the upset caused when one person talks badly about another. And I think we've become a lot more aware recently of just how important relationships are to us, especially as we're currently not able to mix together or even give each other hugs. The Bible is all about relationships. It reveals to us that God himself is relational, that he's a person, that he has thoughts and feelings and that he cares about his creation and really cares deeply about us all and longs to restore and heal us. We were created to have a loving relationship with our Heavenly Father, not one of fear of doing the wrong thing, fear of his displeasure. That's why when we are estranged from God, which we all are, until we receive Jesus into our lives, we try to fill the void in our lives with things that fill that gap. But then we find that they only satisfy us for a very short time. Comfort eating, chocolate for an immediate hit, going shopping, a new pair of shoes, maybe a new car or a TV. For me personally, I knew that something was missing in my life. Although I attended Christian schools, when I became a teenager, I began to question things, especially through the books we had to read at school. In fact, I became a bit cynical and sceptical about the things I had grown up with. But I decided that if God was knowable, then I wanted to know him myself. It became important to me to find out. And for me at that time, that even involved looking at other faiths and ideas apart from Christianity. When our first baby Becky was born, Trevor and I wanted to have her blessed, not christened, which I had been as a baby. So we visited the local Baptist church and we asked the pastor to include her in a dedication service. Of course he said yes. But he also said, maybe you should get to know us first, because actually it's you, the parents, who will dedicate yourselves to bringing up Becky in the ways of God. So we started attending church every Sunday, while Trevor's mother babysat for us. What I found curious at that time was that I became aware of a kind of struggle going on in my head. I knew that when the pastor spoke about Jesus, I felt quite antagonistic. I even had swear words coming into my mind, and I never swore. That caused me to take it seriously. If that was happening, then there must be something in it. I started to ask questions. If you can hear me, God, why, about, why this? Or what about that? And then I found that each week those very questions were answered in the following Sunday's message. Until one day... I finally realised that someone up there was actually giving me the answers to those questions. I sensed that God was saying, you have all the pieces of the jigsaw now except one, and I'm not going to give you that one, because that is a step of faith to act on what I've already revealed to you. And that's when I stopped fighting God and I surrendered my life to him, something I had not done before. And I knew I had to thank Jesus for what he had done for me. That he had died in my place because of my sin. That was when I was reconciled to God. Suddenly I knew the true meaning of reconciliation for myself. There was an immediate feeling of peace in my heart. And an amazing sense of coming home. So the big question is, have you been reconciled to your Heavenly Father? It really is the most important question that you will ever have to answer. Well, that's my message for all of you watching this this morning who aren't yet followers of Jesus. But for those of you who are, 
there is another significant question, and that is one that all of us have to answer. Do you know that everyone who has already been reconciled to God through Jesus has been given the ministry of reconciliation themselves? Here's what the Apostle Paul says about this in his letter to the Corinthians, and it's 2 Corinthians 5, verses 17 to 21. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. What a wonderful passage that is. When I first became a Christian, I wanted to know, what now then? Now I'm a disciple of Jesus, how am I meant to live? Of course, the Bible tells us all we need to know about that. But somehow we don't get to hear much about this. The fact that every one of us has been given the ministry of reconciliation. The ability to help others find peace with God too. The truth is that you are an ambassador for Jesus. You have been given an incredible ministry to tell others about what he's done for you to share with them how your life has changed and how theirs can be too, so that they could be reconciled to God as well. Our God is a missionary God. Jesus came to save us and to restore relationship with us, to bring healing to our lives. And he promises never to leave us, that his spirit lives in us and he will give us the words to say whenever we step out and tell other people about how we've met with Jesus and how he loves them too. As Jesus put it, I'm with you always. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. One day we'll all be together before God's throne in glory, countless people from every nation, worshipping him, every one of us having been reconciled to our Heavenly Father. So that's the true message of Christmas. We can all be reconciled to God through Jesus. And all of us who have been reconciled can have the joy of bringing everyone we know to that same wonderful place. So God bless you all, and may I wish you a very happy new year. A year that will be full of opportunities to be an, an ambassador for Jesus. Amen.
Good morning, church, and I hope we had a nice Christmas. My name is Ken, and I lead the Donna congregation. I just want to invite us for our crossover night prayers this year. Normally in uh, Hope Church Downham, every year we have what we call the crossover night when we start praying from 10.30 into the new year. So this year we are inviting every member of Hope Church from the different congregation to come and join us this year to pray. We'll be praying from 10.30 and we'll pray into the new year. It's not just only prayers. We have opportunity to sing and to worship God. And also we have opportunity to listen to what God might want to speak to us concerning the new year. We listen to some prophetic insight into the new year. So I'm sure it's going to be an exciting time in God's presence to sing into the new year and to hear what God has for us as a church into the new year. So I welcome each and every one of us to come and join us. We are not coming physically this time around because of the, the pandemic. So we are going to have a Zoom session. It's actually going to happen in, you know, on Zoom. So we are going to send the Zoom link to everybody and, you know, uh, and uh, the, the different congregation will be able to put it you know, in their, on their web, WhatsApp page so that everybody can be able to have you know, an idea of the time and uh, also to log in to the Zoom session. So we welcome you this time around and we hope you will enjoy it. Welcome and God bless. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you've really been blessed by what you've heard and we pray that you have a very happy new year. I'm just going to pray before we finish. Father, we thank you for this season. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Lord, I pray that as we enter 2021, Lord, that you will be um, with us. Lord, that your hope will um, guide us. Lord, I pray that your peace will surround us in everything that we do. For your glory, Jesus. Amen.
pelo teu favor, Senhor. Ciao. In the old days, in the old days, he'll come. 